This is a video for A-Level and IB Psychology talking about the key terms relating to inferential statistics. This video is going to go through key concepts such as observed and critical values, p-values, hypotheses and errors, all the things that relate to inferential statistical testing. So inferential statistics are used to see whether or not a null hypothesis is true. Remember, a null hypothesis would state there would be no effect between our variables or no relationship in a correlation. If the results were found by chance in our experiment or our research, then we must accept the null hypothesis because we have not found an effect. And it's an inferential statistic which will allow us to make this decision. In inferential statistics, we calculate the observed value. So we go through all the different stages of the test and we then compare our observed value or the calculated value to the critical value, which we find in the critical values test. And this comparison will allow us to decide whether or not the result is real or is due to chance. Chance is obviously going to play a role in all psychological studies, and therefore the role of inferential statistics is to discuss whether or not the result is due to chance or more likely due to a change in the IV. When we know the probability of something being due to chance, then we can decide either to accept the null or accept our alternative hypothesis. If the difference in our data is too small to be significant, the null hypothesis is accepted. So how do we decide if the difference is significant? Well, usually we would accept something if the probability of it being due to chance is less than 5%. If that probability is less than 5%, we would accept our alternative hypothesis and reject our null. If it was bigger than 5%, we'd do the opposite. We'd accept the null as it's unlikely the effect was caused by the IV and more likely that it's due to chance. The problem is, in psychology, is that we don't tend to use fractions. Instead, they want to see probability. We would often accept results if there's a 1 in 20 likelihood or less of the results being due to chance and nearly they are always accepted if there's only a 1 in 100 likelihood of, of there being a result due to chance. So, as I said before, we don't use fractions, so instead we would be using decimals and percentages. And the typical figures you'll see in inferential statistics are 0 0.05, 0 0.01 and 0 0.001, which is 5%, 1% and 0.1% respectively. And if you have a result which is only... 0.1% due to chance, that's a pretty good finding. So typical phrases we would see are like here in the middle of the screen that I'm pointing with the mouse now. And this little symbol here simply means the probability of our results are equal or less than 5% due to chance. With P representing probability, the symbol meaning less than or equal to, and 0 0.05 meaning 1 in 20. This is very important as it appears in all of your critical values tables. The level of significance is also uh, requiring certain things such as the number of participants or the degrees of freedom. And you'll use this to help you correctly interpret the correct level on your critical values table. In inferential statistics, as with everything, there can be errors. And in psychology and the sciences, we refer to type 1 and type 2 errors. A type 1 error is where you reject the null and you support the alternative when in fact you have not found a result. So therefore, it's a fake result. And usually this happens if your level of significance is too lenient. So you've gone for a 10% probability that a result is due to chance. A type 2 error is the opposite. This is where you reject your alternative hypothesis and you accept your null, and you're therefore ignoring real results. And this probably happens when your level of significance is too stringent. So you're looking at whether it's due to 1% um, down to chance or rather than 5%. So when we are talking about inferential statistics, key things that you would need to write up in your conclusions um, are all the ideas that I've just mentioned there. So you would talk about your um, critical value, so the figure from the table, the observed value, the figure that you've calculated. You would state whether or not your result is significant or not and state why. And this would be because either 
your observed value is greater than or less than the critical value based on the test that you've chosen to do. You would also state at which p-value you'd used um, to test, so whether or not it's 5% due to chance, 1% due to chance, and then I would tend to say the opposite as well. You'd also tell the examiner whether you are going to reject or accept your null hypothesis and why, and then you might also do the same for your alternative hypothesis. So that was a brief overview of interpreting inferential statistics, going through some of the key terms related to it.